Legally Blonde revolutionized the classic chick flick genre, flipping stereotypes and combining feminist theory with hyper-feminine aesthetics. It follows fashion merchandising major Elle Woods, who is head of the UCLA sorority house. <laughs> After being brutally dumped by her boyfriend, Warner, she decides to win him back by applying to Harvard Law, the very school which he thought was too serious for a fun-loving girl like her. Over the course of the film, she slowly develops a true passion for law and realizes that romance does not have to be her only motivator in life. Meet the cast! Elle, our ambitious protagonist. Warner, Elle's serious ex-boyfriend. Vivian, Warner's stuck-up new fiancé. Emmett, a teacher's assistant at Harvard Law and Elle's love interest. Professor Callahan, Harvard's infamous Criminal Law 101 professor. In 2007, a musical adaptation of Legally Blonde is made. This is important not only because the musical is so much better than before, it's so much better than before. but because it addresses points that the movie doesn't, such as the privilege that these characters, especially Elle, experience. In the third song of the musical, What You Want, Elle has just decided to apply to Harvard Law School to follow her ex, Warner. Elle's dad explicitly says he'll pay the way for her if she gets in. This shows how Elle has never had to worry about money because of her rich parents. She seems unaware of this until one key character brings it up, Emmett. Seemingly the rich, conventionally attractive love interest in the movie has an added backstory in the musical. He was raised by a single mother and grew up in a rough neighborhood, so he's able to call Elle out on the advantage she has over him and others. He has a whole song addressing this called Chip on My Shoulder, where he sings, I got through law school by busting my ass, working two jobs in addition to class. He worked two jobs in order to afford Harvard. Emmett has no sympathy for Elle, because he has earned this opportunity and is motivated by his mom. Meanwhile, Elle doesn't even care about law. She only came out to Harvard to follow a man. This privilege that most of these characters have is briefly mentioned in the movie with Warner. There's a scene where Vivian tells Elle that Warner didn't get into Harvard and his rich dad had to help him out. Rather than focusing on her education and advantage in the beginning, Elle is mainly interested in her aesthetic and romantic pursuits. Oh my God, Roro. Oh my God, hey. You'll never believe I just heard about the coolest new trend. It's called feminism. Yeah, yeah, feminism. <laughs> it's like about women's rights. <laughs> yeah, like, like women, mm -hmm. like fighting for their own, like, like independence. Oh my god, that is so fetch. El Sorority, the Delta News, are an incredibly tight-knit community of women who consider each other family. This is a healthy dynamic to portray in movies such as this, where women are shown to have strong and long-lasting relationships that can provide consistent support for the main character, rather than constantly pitting women against each other, a trope that often remains unresolved in films aimed towards young girls. However, Although Elle's sorority sisters show unconditional love and assistance to Elle through her various pursuits, there is a clear ongoing culture of strict gender roles and the desire to please men that seems to be ingrained in the Delta Nu community. This definitely shows up more prevalently in the musical adaptation, with the very on-the-nose line, Now that a man chose you, your life begins today, said by the Delta News as Elle pre prepares for her engagement dinner. A large part of Elle's journey as a character is looking past her relationship with Warner and finding faith in herself to follow her own personal ambitions. Though the plot begins with a breakup and Elle is primarily motivated by her pursuit of her ex-boyfriend, romance is not the focus of the film. However, Elle does end up in a relationship, just not with Warner. In both the film and the musical, Elle develops a romance with Emmett by the end of the story. In the film, Emmett is a fairly insignificant character. He gives Elle various bits of advice through their acquaintance and aids with the case, but generally has no notable personality and seems very flat in terms of his character. There is no actual development around Elle and Emmett's relationship either, as they share very minimal interactions and get thrown together at the end of the film, seemingly because he was the only other conventionally attractive man available. However, the lack of focus on the relationship did give Elle a lot of independence in her own story. Musical Emmett's character is greatly expanded on, giving him personality, flaws, and a tough backstory. His and Elle's relationship is also healthily developed, as they form a genuine and strong friendship throughout the course of the show. 
They balance each other out, Emmett checking Elle's privilege and encouraging her in her studies, while Elle aids him in finding self-confidence and helps him form bonds outside of his work. One effect of Emmett's increase in significance within the story is that he does play a larger part in Elle's journey, being the first one to nudge her in the direction of her goals. This could be seen as something that takes away from Elle's self-driven independence, which is very valid, but it also highlights more of her that requires improvement, giving her a richer character arc. Meant to function in society by keeping the peace, supposedly working to help maintain a fair system. Obviously, these systems don't always work, and Professor Callahan is a direct example of how law frequently fails. His intro song in the musical called Blood in the Water demonstrates how he views law as a competition. He says in the song that only spineless snobs quarrel with the morally dubious jobs, implying that he's willing to work for guilty clients for his own personal gain. Elle is in direct opposition to this. She has an actual passion for law because she wants to help people. Paulette, the nail tech that Elle relies on throughout the whole movie, has her dog stolen from her by her ex-boyfriend. When she and Elle go to try to reclaim him, Elle uses the excuse of a common law marriage to claim equi equitable distribution of properties so Paulette can get her dog back. After Elle has a whole moment of realization in the musical, she finally feels passionate about law when she's helping the underdog. <laughs> Professor Callahan cares more about how people perceive him than his actual morals, which is problematic when he's a lawyer. It's not shown in the movie, but we can assume he was probably brought up in privilege as a cis white man. Therefore, this affects his interactions with others, especially Elle. Callahan sees that he has power over her and uses that to manipulate her and assault her for his own benefit. As soon as he sees that Elle won't let herself be used by him, he drops the facade and fires her from his internship. The way Elle dresses affects how people interact with her. However, it's not just Professor Callahan, but Vivian as well. In both the movie and the musical, Vivian witnesses Professor Callahan sexually assault Elle, but she reacts differently each time. In the movie, Vivian immediately assumes Elle initiated it and is using her looks to get ahead. This is probably due to Vivian's struggles with embracing her own sexuality and her internalized misogyny. She judges Elle for her confidence. However, the end of the movie implies Vivian and Elle became close friends afterwards. The film could have placed more of a focus on their developing friendship, instead of just mentioning it briefly at the end. Luckily, the musical switches things up. When Vivian witnesses the assault, her interactions towards Elle change immediately. She breaks up with Warner and encourages Elle to continue the trial. And competition she has with Elle over Warner are forgotten, and we're able to see the beginnings of a long-lasting friendship between the two of them before the musical is over. Enid Wexler, or Hoops in the musical adaptation, is a self-proclaimed feminist who is very vocal about her opinions on society, specifically the patriarchy. In the film, she's very upfront about her sexuality and identity. Generally, she's a very minor character in the grand scheme of things primarily used as a satirical caricature of a radical man-hating feminist, her minimal dialogue poking fun at the male viewpoint of what feminism looks like. Though obviously intended for comedic purposes, Enid receives very little actual development and is treated first and foremost as an unimportant side character. The musical, however, expands on Enid, giving her multiple scenes and even including her in Callahan's internship, giving her more stage time and interaction with Elle. When introduced, Enid is dismissive of Elle, obviously seeing her as a dumb, pretty girl not worth talking to. As the show goes on, she warms up to her, though, slowly realizing that Elle's self-expression and femininity is not an attack on feminism, simply another way of approaching it. She even joins Vivian to help convince Elle to return to Harvard for the final trial. Instead of being two-dimensional, she is shown to be a compassionate and intelligent person, able to work to get over her biases. Her sexuality is shown less to be a given thing, like how the film seems to equate radical feminism with queerness, and more as an important, but not all-encompassing part of her character. <laughs> Enrique, or Nikos, in the musical is a one-off role, appearing in the first part of Brooke's trial. He's used mainly as a plot device for Elle, giving her the chance to express her and is a very stereotypical representation of a gay man. 
This generally makes sense for the time Legally Blonde was written, using ridiculous evidence to prove that the pool boy could not have slept with Brooke because his style and mannerisms indicate that he's gay. Logically, this evidence does not hold up, as it disregards the possibility of bisexuality. The musical does a better job with this, making it clear that the pool boy is not attracted to women, and making fun of stereotypes with the song There, Right There, which compares gay stereotypes with European ones. and pack up your clothes clear out the room and drop off the key leave with what's left of my dignity get in the car and just go chalk it all up to experience they said I'd fail but I disagreed who could say then where my path would lead now I know Back to the sun Back to the shore Back to what I was before Back where 